Hi there. Uh, in this video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to apply detailed textures to your terrain. Um, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to create a terrain for Quai Engine and um, how to bring it inside the Quai Engine, but we didn't deal about how to apply details textures to the terrain. All we did last time is just apply one big grass ma material to the whole terrain. So we didn't have any different materials for uh, the clips, for example. So um, before we start uh, working in a Quai Engine, the first thing that I'll be doing is show you showing you how the Quai Engine blends all these textures together. Um, it's always good to understand how the Quai Engine blends the color map that we have here with the detail texture tiles that you'll see when you zoom in. So uh, we'll be using Photoshop with the layer system, and we'll try to I'll try to explain you how the color map is blended with the uh, detail textures. So um, later on, what we're gonna do as well before I go to Photoshop, we I'll also show you uh, how to create materials, custom materials for your terrain. That way, when you save your terrain and your level, when you rerun the the SDK, when you load up your level, you won't find any bad surprises such as. Uh, materials being changed and having uh, ba bad blending um, tiles. Sometimes you'll find some issues regarding that. And we'll probably run into these, those issues and I'll show you how to solve those problems later on when you're trying to paint your detailed textures on your terrain. All right, now, um, first of all, what we're gonna do is bring in our color texture that we made uh, in the previous tutorial for the whole terrain, the color texture. If you haven't seen the video series, I'd suggest you do so. That way you can see where we are uh, at, where we're starting from. Now, if you remember properly, I saved my color texture on my desk in a folder, tutorial folder. And this is my color texture. I'll bring it inside Photoshop. There we go, okay. So the way it works, what the Quai Engine does is actually overlay this color map on top of um, detail textures. The detail textures here are rendered, er, rendered in grayscale. That's how it works. So in order to illustrate that in Photoshop, what I'm going to do here is double click on this layer here and set it its blending mode to overlay. All right. Now I'll create a new layer, which will be I'll first name this layer here color map all right and this one will be a detail texture detail for instance I'll such name this detail grass now um, in the quiet engine what's gonna happen is you go to textures all right and you create a new layer and this one will be named grass okay uh, now, what's happening in the Quai Engine? It is bring in when you bring in the texture, uh, detail texture map. In this case, we're going to be a grass texture. So I'll bring in a texture in Photoshop. All right, and I'll turn it into a grayscale texture by doing a hue saturation operation. Turn down the saturation to zero or minus one hundred. All right. I'm gonna tile it a few times. So in order to do that, I'll just scale my texture. 512. And do control A, control C, just copy, select all copy, create new canvas, 2048 by 2048 this time. And pass my texture. Tile it a few times. I'm going to copy this detail texture, which is basically a grass texture that's been tiled a few times, under the color map. Okay, there we go. 
So this is the way the CryEngine blends the texture. Now, uh, how do you paint your detail textures onto the CryEngine? The way it works is actually by masking the texture here. So in order to do that, all we gotta do is create a mask texture here, use a bucket and use a full black, and then take a brush, switch to white, where white is gonna tell where the texture is gonna display and black is gonna tell where the texture shouldn't be. And start painting in white the values where the detail texture is going to apply. So this is what's happening actually when you're uh, painting your detail textures inside the CryEngine. Now you can imagine the kind of uh, terrain you could get if you had like eight different layers overlaying on top of each other having each uh, where each layer has a different material. It could be rock, sand, soil. Uh, lots of different materials, different types of grass, and uh, you can achieve some really interesting results and a high amount of detail since you can um, apply normal mapping to each of these detail maps and even parallax and parallax occlusion mapping which are a bit more expensive um, uh, performance wise but they could achieve some really nice stuff if you, you use them properly on your terrain um, so this is how the CryEngine blends the textures together. Alright, now back to the CryEngine. Now where we start, where we end, where we uh, stopped in the last tutorial, all I did was just apply a whole, uh, a grass texture uh, layer to the whole terrain and we don't have any different materials. So first of all what we're going to do is create custom materials for each, each detail texture that we're going to use on, your, on our terrain, all right? I'll show you how to paint them in the engine and how to uh, make the engine paint them in grayscale. Okay. Now, let's open our material editor. Open up the materials folder and open up the terrain materials folder. All right, we have here a bunch of um, detail texture that comes with the SDK. Okay, so um, your the first thing that you would do, you would probably okay. I have all these materials; they're all ready, and all I need to do is just go to textures here and um, create new layers uh, with these materials applied to them. The default materials that comes with the SDK. Now. I'll do it this way and we'll probably run into some problems and I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, in this case I'd like to uh, apply a cliff material to uh, a rock, a stone material to this uh, slop. And same goes for what's in the background here, all right? Um, there is here a nice cliff material. It's a 3D material. Um, keep in mind that 3D materials are projected in 3D, which means that it's projected in three different axes. Uh, it's projected differently than a regular material, which is projected uh, on two axes, x and x and y. But the three D material is in three different axes, which uh, helps you get minimal stretching uh, when you're um, working on a terrain. As you can see here, you can see some stretching here, and it's probably more interesting to use a three D material for this kind of um, example. So I'll bring in a 3D material, and there's only one 3D material. You can obviously, I can show you how to create your own 3D material, and it is pretty simple to do so. Let's open up material editor again, go to the terrains folder, and pick our uh, Cliff Aslan IS4 underscore 3D. And I'll just rename this layer um, cliff okay and once you got your material selected in the material editor all you gotta do is select your layer here and assign material there you go it is done so um, there we go so change layer texture and select the 128 underscore gray dot BMP 
one. Okay. Now that it is done, all you gotta do is have your roller roll-up bar show up here in the interface. Go to Layer Painter. And the first thing that it would do is try to paint your cliff material onto your terrain. Now this is the kind of result that you would get when you start painting directly your uh, layer onto your terrain. And as you can see, it doesn't blend properly. The color map isn't overlaid on top of it properly because it has some color information already applied to it. And the color information, where the color information is going to be coming from? Uh, in order to deactivate your color information, um, deactivate the fact that you're painting color information uh, on your big color map here, you need to turn the hardn hardness to zero, first of all. Okay? And once I do so, when I paint that, as you can see, it's already starting to uh, blend a bit in a better way. Now, um, you could adjust your material to have an even blend to have it blend even better, uh, in a better way. So all you gotta do is go to the material editor, select your cliff material, and tw um, tweak the settings for uh, each uh, material here, for which is displayed on each axis. As you can see, it's in the X, Y, and Z axis. And all you gotta do is go to the diffuse and turn down the brightness a bit. And in this case, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna use a brightness of 220 for each channel. Okay, there it is. And all you gotta do, just copy, Control C, and pass these values over on each different material, uh, sub material. There we go, just checking if I apply properly the values. And there we go. It is a bit darker than before, and it blends a bit more uh, better than before. And once you start painting, it looks like this. Now, uh, if you went into an accident and you started painting with the hardness set to 1 or uh, even a 0 0.01 does make a difference and it doesn't aff it and it does affect oh crash this kind of stuff does happen a lot but it won't stop us from working on the tutorial this is probably the uh, first crash ever since I worked on the tutorial so it depends on which kind of operation you're working on and apparently uh, the terrain system is still has a few bugs and um, these bugs are probably the main reason why the editor crashes a lot I'm hoping that Crytek would prob would update their terrain system because apparently it didn't haven't hasn't been updated for uh, seven years I mean there are some minor updates uh, but these are more more related to the tools than the core system itself. All right, I'm gonna have to start over again. Where room? Let's see. Uh, yeah, we need to create a new layer. Cliff. Change its color its layer texture to gray and apply the material to it. Some material, there we go. And change its diffuse color to a lower value which will darken our material. All right, there we go. Open up my roller bar. Get a cliff and 
take a tiny bit. Okay, so these are the first issues that you might meet. So um, in order to avoid this, to fix this problem already, I think the um, there's a way of fixing this. You could probably go to re-import and select all your tiles and re-import your color map. Your terrain color map. There it is. Okay, there it is. As you can see, it does blend nicely with uh, terrain. Okay. Let's paint a bit more. Oops, wrong layer. Yeah, I forget. I forgot to turn off the hardness to zero. I have to turn it off to zero, and in order to avoid any issues later, since I painted um, a part here where the hardness set to one, and I change the color map when I do so. When you paint with the hardness set, set to one, you're actually painting on your color map and painting a mass texture for your detail texture. That's what's happening exactly. You're, affect, you're affecting this layer here at the same time while painting the mask, color, uh, the mask for the detail texture. And the color is set, uh, you can change the colors here for um, the big color map when you're painting with a hardness set to 1 or 05 or whatever values as long as it, it is over 0. Alright, so we'll re-import our color texture. That way we could reset our color map. I'm probably going to run into a crash again. Ah, there we go. All right. Now we got the hardness set to zero, and we can start painting stuff. Okay. Uh, a few tips about painting layers on the terrain. Uh, let's say you got a gigantic terrain and you, you don't want to spend a whole day just painting detail layer, uh, detail textures on your terrain and uh, you want it to affect in a, some sort of procedural way or just project uh, automatically your textures on your terrain. All you got to do is just set up a, a slop angle for your detail texture to apply. In this case we're painting a cliff material and we want it to apply to slop angles to high slop angles. So we're gonna start experimenting with different slop angles and see which one is the best for this detail texture. So I'll start off with a 10 degree slop and see how it applies to my terrain. Okay, as you can see it applies to certain area. Here in this case, I'm trying to paint in this case here and it doesn't apply since it has a slop that's lower than 10 degrees, okay? Let's cancel this. Let's try with a higher slop degree. Let's try 35 degrees for instance. Why not? Let's go to this part here. As you can see, I'm going to take a bigger brush so that way you can see how it applies. And crash again. Ah, man. I hope it's gonna work. <laughs> Probably gonna have to smoke a cigarette while working on this. <laughs> okay, let's wait a bit. 